My parents got divorced when I was about 10 years old. My dad remarried not shortly thereafter. And my stepmother was the Wicked Witch of the East. When the house fell on the Wicked Witch of the West sister in the Wizard of Oz, her spirit was reincarnated in my stepmother. The woman who was the most vile incarnation of evil the world, or at least Lemison, Massachusetts, had ever known. You had to dress up for Sunday dinner. You couldn't put your elbow on the table. You had to wrap Christmas presents a certain way. You could not pet the cat. And yet, this evil incarnation was a home wrecker and stole my dad and ruined our family. All the stories we make up tell ourselves. Man. We do. We create grievance stories. We construct entire narratives that may have no basis in reality when we're hurt or when we've been hurt. <clears throat> and thus we interpret the story through the filter we create. We only see the experience in one certain way, completely missing any perspective or input from anything else involved in the story or anyone. And we retell the story over and over and over. I probably couldn't count all the times I retold the story of my wicked, evil stepmother to myself and to anyone who would listen between the ages of, say, 10 and 17. And because we tell the story over and over, one of the things it does is it reinforces our own perception, whether accurate or not, and then we bury the actual emotions the story we're making up is covering over. So it was years before I dealt with the grief and the loss and the pain of the 10-year-old kid whose family just broke up. God bless my parents, they tried, you know, the school counselor, another counselor, but I didn't know what to say or what to do and I didn't say anything. But I kept telling that story. And then, what happens with our grievance story is Anything emotionally that takes us to the place of the grievance story brings the story back over and over, and we start connecting it to other stories, and we tend to make up other stories, and it starts a cycle. Our grievance stories are like Marley's ghost in a Christmas carol. They bring along the chain of all that emotional baggage that piles up and piles up and piles up. And we drag it around our whole lives until we go through some kind of forgiveness and reconciliation. And the grievance stories are powerful because they stop that emotional healing process of going into the reality of the story and feeling the difficult emotions and expressing them and processing them and then maybe getting to a place where we can go through forgiveness, which is an internal process. It's not so much the saying of I'm sorry to someone else as the refusal to let the incident, the pain, the hurt so dominate your life that you can't let it go. And if we can't get to the forgiveness, we can't get to the reconciliation, which is actually making amends and coming to terms with the person or the trauma that has hurt us. Forgiveness does not mean, well, you know, you hurt me, but hey, let's go out to lunch, everything's cool. That's not forgiveness. It doesn't mean it goes away. 
Rather, it's a process that we let ourselves come to a place where we don't let it be a continuing journey of the same kind of intense pain. Lewis Smead says, to forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover that the prisoner is you. Forgiveness does not mean that the hurt or pain was okay, because there's lots of hurt and pain and abuse and worse that is not okay. But if we don't come to some type of forgiveness, it only traps us. There may be a hurt and pain that never gets to the reconciliation because there was too much real damage, even criminal damage. But forgiveness is an internal process. And we can't even get there if we can't get over our grievance stories and stop retelling them. <coughs> this whole process with forgiveness is not a rational process. It is an emotional one. Our rational process is the process that gets tricked into believing the grievance stories. If X crime was committed against me, then X is required for justice, and only that will be okay. Come to think of it, it's how our criminal justice system works. It's about who deserves what punishment for what wrongdoing instead of trying to heal the people who are acting in a criminal way and their victims. When we talk forgiveness and reconciliation, it's about finding a way into that place Rumi talked about when he said, out beyond wrongdoing and right doing is a field, and I'll meet you there. It's a hard place to get to. And we can't get to any of it if we're stuck in our own grievance story. And grievance stories are important because if we're falling into our own, and it's easy to, we all have them, the easier it is to buy into our own grievance stories, the easier it is for us to buy into larger grievance stories that others or our culture want us to keep retelling. You know, the grievance story about those uppity black Africans making noise, creating inner city ghettos, committing crimes, taking drugs, ruining the country. The grievance story that is told about the Jewish people, how they were the reason Germany lost World War I and ruined its economy. The grievance story that could only be created by creating a superior race and wiping out our enemies. The grievance story that causes students from Catholic Memorial High School on Friday night to chant, you killed Jesus at a basketball game with Newton North and its large Jewish population. When we keep retelling the grievance story, we never get to a place of process and forgiveness. We can keep retelling a grievance story that those Mexican immigrants are lazy and taking all our jobs. They're like Schrodinger's cat. They're both at the same time taking our jobs and too lazy to work. But we keep retelling that story over and over again. We tell the grievance story about how all the evil Muslims in the world conspired to create 9-11 and that they all hate us and all hate our freedom and all hate everything about America and we need to wipe them out and keep them out. We can keep retelling the grievance story about how America is being harmed and ruined and hurt by the horrible gay agenda. Where all those evil gay people want to turn our children gay and ruin the institution of marriage. Grievance stories are easy. One of the reasons why it's so important we recognize our own 
is so we can recognize the ones that are even larger than us and not be sucked into retelling them over and over again so that they become true. When we tell a grievance story that's inaccurate, in many ways what we're doing is dehumanizing the person who hurt us or the person we feel has hurt us. We dehumanize the group of people who has hurt us or we believe has hurt us. And the danger in that is we know that when you dehumanize someone, they're not a human being like you. They're a Jew or a Mexican rapist or a murderous Muslim. And when you dehumanize other people and they're not human like you, it's easy to taunt and to bully and to hurt and to torture and to rape and to kill because they're not human like us. The grievance story quickly becomes scapegoating. The grievance story stops us from softening our hearts to getting to that place where forgiveness and reconciliation happens. And we tell our own grievance stories on a large scale too. The grievance story about the stupid, ignorant, poor, white person from the South with a gun rack on their pickup truck who if only they'd be a little more intelligent, would be able to help us fight the other grievance stories. is in itself a grievance story. And then I tell myself a grievance story about that friend from high school who's posting all kinds of things that are racist and hateful and supporting certain politicians and I just want to tell more grievance stories about that person, how it's their fault that these people get away with these things. The hardest work of all when we face our grievance stories is to actually go in and try and see the incident or the trauma or the hurt from another perspective besides our own. To understand that there's a lived, real experience on the other side of our hurt and our pain that may also be filled with hurt and pain. We're never going to know it if we don't enter into really difficult conversations and from places of forgiveness go through those difficult conversations into some kind of reconciliation. It is hard work. Maybe what we need in our own lives, maybe in our culture, is our own reconciliation project, our own truth and reconciliation commission. In South Africa, at the end of apartheid, they created a truth and reconciliation commission where the black majority that had been mistreated and hurt and killed and jailed and tortured, instead of retaliating forced the people who committed the crimes in the white minority government to listen to every single story they could find of the hurt and the pain. That could have turned into vengeance taking on a grand scale. They certainly had the numbers. But at the insistence of Bishop Desmond Tutu, they went a different way. Instead of retelling the grievance story, and people who had a legitimate one that involved thousands of deaths and torture and rape and killing. Instead of telling the grievance story, they sought the real story as hard as it was. And it wasn't perfect. But it was certainly better than the revenge taking that could have been in its place. My dad died last fall, as you know. 
and since, including a week or so ago, had a long, drawn-out conversation with my stepmom on the phone. And I listened, and she talked of the death and the pain and the grief and the anger and the sadness, and there was a lot of crying. This woman, who was the wicked witch of the East, who was the reason and cause of all my childhood pain, just another person like me, doing the best she can. And we're part of each other's story now. And that story has depth and Alzheimer's and loss and grief and struggle. And it's a tough story to tell and share. But it's a real story. It's not a grievance story I made to keep up the pain. May we all, and may our society, have the courage to tell our real stories to each other. The alternative is too dark. But by doing so, by telling our stories, we help to create the place of hope and healing we seek so profoundly.